In this video, we're going to take a look at trees in general and specifically a binary tree because we're going to need this data structure to handle the BSP splitting algorithm. Now, the first thing is, what is a tree? Well, a tree is a data structure that is made up of nodes with each node having exactly one parent and zero or more children nodes. Traditionally, they are drawn as shown on the screen. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of trees. All of them have different performance char characteristics for inserting, different performance characteristics for retrieving. Uh, this, there's a whole bunch of different reasons for why you would use one tree over another tree. In this particular case, due to how the uh, binary partitioning works, we know we are always going to have two children. In other words, every time we take a space, we're going to split it in two. We will always have two. So what we need then is a balanced binary tree. But now all trees share some common terminology. So to start off with, we have the root of the tree. The root of the tree can sort of be considered the first node. It has no parent. It is the only node in a tree that has no parent. Going down, we have a concept of sister nodes. The sister nodes exist on the same level and the same parent. So this node here and this node here are not considered sisters because they have different parents. Finally, once you get all the way down to where you've got nodes with no children, you are on the leaves of the tree. Now, these terminologies are very important, so it's you need to make sure that you understand these well. You've got the root, which has no parent, and you have leaves, which have no children. And then the concept of sister nodes, which are on the same level and have the same parent. Now what kind of data do we need to store in this structure? Well, looking at the nodes, there's a couple of things that the nodes need. First, the node needs a reference to its parent node. A node must always know what its parent is, even if that happens to be null, which tells you that, hey, this is the root node. A node also needs to know its children. It has to have a reference to its children nodes. And again, if those are null, then that tells you you're on a leaf node. That potential for the reference still has to be there. And then finally, of course, whatever data is going to be needed to be stored here, which in our case is going to be room data. Now, when you're designing classes, you always need to keep in mind what, what is this particular object supposed to do. In our case, there is a difference between trees and nodes. You don't want to try and design one class and have it do both the jobs of a tree and have it do the jobs of a node. A tree is all about managing nodes and manipulating the nodes, navigating through them, creating new nodes, expanding the tree, things like that. And that's what the tree is responsible for. The node is just simply responsible for itself, understanding who its parent is, who its children are, things like that, managing its own data. The node cares nothing for the tree. And the tree, generally speaking, shouldn't be trying to manipulate the node's information directly. Now, another good design question that comes up with this is, do we want to design a generic tree structure or something that can be used in multiple different projects? Or do we design our tree structure specifically for the BSP dungeon algorithm? Now, we've got some good points on both sides. A generic tree structure would be useful outside of this course, but it's going to take a lot more time to do. do writing a good generic data structure that is useful in a wide variety of situations with a wide variety of data types, it's actually kind of tricky. There's a lot of little details that you have to try and consider. You've got to dig into some of the more complicated aspects of C-sharp. There's, there's a lot of additional work there. 
um, a specialized, very specific data structure, it's going to be easier to write. It's going to be faster to write because it's going to be a little bit easier to debug it because you only have to worry about this one specific case. But it's going to be useless to anything besides what you write it for. All right, so designing the tree. Now we've already done a uh, overview of the BSP dungeon generation algorithm. Um, but again, just to recap, we are taking a space and we are splitting it in binary partitions. So we're going to take the main gray space here, split it to A and B. We're going to take A and split it into A1A2. We're going to take B and split it into B1B2. And you can see from this drawing here, this is pretty much exactly a balanced binary tree. And now I've used the word balanced a couple of times. I don't believe I've explained that. By saying the tree is balanced, that means every level of the tree is completely filled out. For example, B is split into B1 and B2. You don't just have one child and the other one be null. A balanced tree always has a full level of leaves. And that's important for this algorithm because that allows us to make several assumptions that makes things a lot easier. And so you've got to keep in mind while you're writing your code later on, never do anything that will unbalance the tree. As all of my notes, all of my examples assume a balanced tree. So if you do something to unbalance it, you're on your own for figuring out how to deal with that, deal with that, and it's not going to be trivial. All right, so enough of that. What kind of data does this suggest to us that the node needs to keep track of? Well, the node needs to know where it is. Notice that you know, once we get down to the A1, A2, B1, B2, we need to keep, make sure we keep track of the shape and location of all of these rectangles. It would also probably be a good idea to track where your split is and what direction it goes, because we're going to need to visualize these. We're going to need to visualize the splits. So the main root level is going to need to track where this split is. A is going to want to track where this split is. B is going to want to track where this split is, and so on. After everything has been split, we need to fill in these rooms. Again, like I mentioned before, um, you know, there's, there's two different uh, terminologies here that we have to keep track of. Uh, when I refer to a node, I am referring to the entire area. So when I refer to a node, I'm referring to this gray area. When I refer to a room, I am referring to this black filled in area. So we've got our nodes location but we're also going to have to keep track of where we generated our room, you know, what's its size and its location. We also have to be careful to make sure that when we generate this location, we always make sure that we keep it relative to the location of the node that we are in. And we'll deal more with that in the notes uh, in a later video. Once we get to the connection phase, things get a little bit more interesting. We should probably have some way of tracking whether or not a room has been connected. And we need to keep track of where all of our corridors are. Now the easiest way to keep track of all the corridors is just simply treat them as another room. Now the, then the question becomes, well, where should we track the corridors? You know, which, which node should the corridor belong to? Uh, several different ways of approaching that. Of course, more detail in later videos, but I generally tend to keep it uh, one level above of the sister. So for connecting these two nodes, this node and this node, I would store the corridor in this node. Probably also a good idea when you're storing these corridors is to make a notation of what is a room and what is a corridor. That will be useful information to us later on when we're looking at populating the dungeon. Because you wouldn't want to try to cram a massive encounter with monsters in a corridor 
but you know that's something you'd want to do in a room instead. So as a quick recap here, some good things that uh, the tree is going to need to know about. You need to know where your splits are. Is your split a vertical or horizontal split? Uh, the area and location of a subdivided space or a node. You're going to need the area and location of each room, location and possibly area of each corridor, and easy access to siblings. Now, a few hints here for the first project, designing the tree. You're going to want two classes. Like I mentioned earlier in this lecture, you've got to keep in mind when designing objects, an object should be for one task. That's all it should be for. So the tree manages nodes. Nodes manage themselves and their data. That is it. So you need a tree class and a node class. So as a rough starting point, if you had a MyTree class, two strongly suggested member variables would be a reference to a node that you call root and a list of nodes that you can store all of your leaves in. Having easy access to your leaves is important both for the BSP algorithm and for growing your tree. When you go to grow your tree, you have to find your leaves. So you're going to have to find leaves anyway, so you might as well keep a list of them. For the node itself, you're going to want to reference to the parent and children. And it bears repeating because sometimes this does confuse people. There is nothing wrong with having a class reference itself. So we are in the tree node class, and in the tree node class, we have references to tree nodes. Now these are all separate instances, so this one instance of a tree node would also have a reference to a different instance of a tree node for parent, and potentially to other references to tree nodes for the children. Now for the children, I'm using an array because in this case I know precisely how many elements I need. I need two elements, always. Whether they're initialized or not, I don't care. I need two elements. I will never need one. I will never need three. So using a array here is the simplest way to go. And that concludes this lecture. And if you think about it, notice anything odd about the structure of these slides. Until the next video.